You interrupted me? But it's been backed into four times in the last month alone. Okay, I definitely saw 45 pounds. That What is up guys, welcome back or to the channel. If it's your first time stopping in, don't forget to go down below and hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Did a little bit of musical chairs and got the fortune uh, pulled back here and second gen's in the front now. But as you guys saw by the title and the thumbnail, we're gonna be installing gauges today. So let's go ahead and go into the garage and we'll go over what I got and uh, everything that we're gonna be doing to the truck today. All right, so we have everything we're gonna be installing on the truck today right here. First off, this will replace the A pillar on the truck. This is a color match uh, to factory as well as the texture is the same as the factory. Uh, triple pillar pod for all of our gauges that we'll be installing today. And then we have our gauges right here. And one thing that's cool about these gauges is they are factory matched. So the needle is gonna match up to the same needle on the uh, speedometer in the truck, which you guys will see when we get these installed. And then on the uh, little bezel here, whatever the technical term for that is, you could also get it in chrome but I chose black because I like everything in black. I think it looks cleaner. And uh, I just, I'm not a Chrome fan, but you can customize them any way you want, um, which is really cool about these gauges. And uh, so right here we got our boost gauge, which is good to 60 pounds. We have our uh, fuel pressure, which again, 60 PSI. And then um, right here we have our parameter, also known as the EGT gauge, which is good for 2000 degrees. So those are the three gauges that we put on the truck today. They are the EV2 series, as you can see. I think they are coming off the EV3 soon. And then right here we have a restrictor valve, which I'm pretty sure is for the fuel um, pressure gauge, but I'll let you guys know when we start getting it installed. And then I have a drill and tap here for an eighth inch MPT for the uh, boost gauge, as well as the EGT you have to drill the manifold um, for the EGT probe. And then you have to drill out the um, intake if you don't have an aftermarket intake for the uh, boost gauge. And I'll just say thank you to ISPRO for getting the fortune up with some gauges. The truck does come with a factory uh, boost gauge on the cluster that you can switch back and forth to along with many other things, but I like to keep track of the oil and the coolant temperature as well, which you can't have it all on one screen, so you gotta switch back and forth, and it's really annoying to do while you're driving. So it'd be nice to have a fixed gauge just for the boost, as well as this goes up to 60 pounds. I think the factory one's only like 30, which I already maxed out now when I'm turned all the way up. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think I'm making for boost. I think I'm somewhere in like the 40 range, but we'll see when we get it installed and go off for a test drive. Um, if you guys wanna check them out on Instagram, it's ispro official, and their website is ispro.com. I'll put it up on the screen here, as well as in the description down below. But let's get these, go ahead and get these installed. Another thing I got right here is a, um, a new shift knob because I wanted to get a, something weighted because the one right now is, one, it's way too short and it's not weighted, which is annoying. So Mishimoto makes a shift knob literally identical to this one, but um, it's like 47 or $48 on Amazon. And I found this one for $16.99. It's the exact same color as the one I was gonna get from Mishimoto but it's $30 cheaper. Um, the only complaint was the same one as the Mishimoto one was these uh, little adapters that you screw into this to attach to your uh, factory uh, stick. They're plastic instead of metal, which I don't understand why they do that. Um, but I'd rather spend $17 on the same thing rather than 47, because I can put a freaking M sticker on top if I want to and <laughs> it looked the exact same. So um, that's the plan for today. Get the gauge installed, get the new shift knob on it. And uh, yeah. I'm excited. Thanks, S Pro. Let's go get them installed. All right, so it's got the shift knob in, and I, I'm already liking it a lot because it's weighted, obviously, and it just, oh, it's so nice. Gonna be fun for sure, shifting through gears. With it now, especially this is a lot higher because the old one's down here, which is like super like weird and annoying. Um, but this one, seven inch long and uh, way better than uh, this little guy. But either way, um, it's on there. I'm excited to take it out for a drive and see how I like it. Little tiny uh, plastic pieces that go inside are super weird. The inside's not threaded, so you put whichever one is uh, closest to yours. You screw it into the uh, knob, and then you just screw it on, and it pretty much threads itself onto there. And it's super tight. Um, just make sure not to over tighten it so you don't screw up the plastic piece. But no, I don't, th I don't think I'll have any problems with it coming loose. But I'll let you know, I'm gonna test it out and uh, see how I like it. You wanna let them know? Okay, so here's the wiring harness I just threw together real quick with the wires they provided because they're longer than what you'll need as you can see right here. 
um, which I'll cut that when we get it out to the truck. But what I did was for the bottom gauge, since it's the shortest one, I cut that to do the three legs for the power of the ground and the dimmer. And then um, the top two are full length still, like I said. But if you throw this right here, I didn't measure anything. Lines up pretty well. Everything got more than enough wire so we won't be short, which is the only thing I was worried about. But I um, took the uh, butt connectors. They also heat shrink as well. And then I offset them so that we don't have a big chunk right there, which this will be hidden anyways. And then also I didn't want to drill anything out. So on the exhaust manifold, there's a plug that I can utilize for the EGT probe. And I'm pretty sure there's a plug on the fast. If not, I can tee into that line, which is super easy. And my buddy told me about this bolt for the um, boost gauge. So I called up ISPRO to see if they had one. Next day, shows up at my doorstep. Granted, they are in Portland, Oregon, um, which is only an hour south from here, but super amazing customer service and super fast shipping. So again, ISPRO, thank you for getting that bolt out to me so fast so we can get these gauges installed today. Um, but with that being said, let's get out to the truck and get this gauge install started. You can see the little plug right there. That's where I'm gonna tap in for the uh, EGT probe. Back there on the exhaust manifold, which is the uh, five millimeter uh, hex head. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that loose real quick and then we'll get the probe put in there. So we got the EGT probe in and I fed the wire over the uh, top of the valve cover to this side and then we'll plug the wire into it and tuck it down after we get the uh, rest of the sensors in. Next time we're gonna move to the uh, boost sensor. This is right here, then we'll work on the fuel pressure and work our way back. And then over here on the intake elbow, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the inside bolt here, and that's where our uh, threaded boost gauge bolt will go. There's the bolt right there, just 10 millimeter. And now we're gonna take our boost bolt, which is part number R7741, I forgot to mention earlier, and we're gonna go ahead and put it in that uh, hole where we just took that bolt out of. So we ran into a problem if we Put the bolt in here, the sensor. You can see it hits the side right there. Um, and I did check it. This is for the 67. This uh, part number R7741 is for the 67 and the 59. Um, so I double checked that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, boost bolt back out, put the uh, normal bolt back in. And I'm gonna go back to the second one and see if we can uh, get it in there. Okay, so I took off that second bolt and tried to put it in there. It was too tight because of the fuel line. So I took out the front bolt again, and I was like, let me try to put this on all the way onto the boost uh, bolt with a sensor on all the way and see if it'll fit. And I put it on in there, super close, and I got it to turn just past it. And what happened was I literally got it to turn past the uh, little tiny tab, perfectly fine, and it was tight. All I needed to do was do a half turn, but I literally took it back out to show you guys that. And when I took it back out, it got stuck on this little tab right here and broke off. So now, it is broken off, but you can get it on there without breaking it off. But when you take it off, it's gonna break. So it is what it is. That's where it goes. We good. So here's one of the wiring harnesses for one of the sensors. And I went to Harbor Freight real quick and grabbed some of this quarter inch uh, heat shrink wrap and decided to wrap the whole entire uh, wiring harness, which I'm gonna do this one too. I just wanna show you the difference real quick, but I think it looks a lot better. And I'm also gonna wrap it in some uh, plastic quarter inch loom for now until I get some more of this uh, nylon stuff. Cause unfortunately all I have right now is three quarter and also one inch. In my opinion, this nylon stuff looks a lot cleaner than that cheap looking plastic loom. But unfortunately no one around here carries the nylon stuff. So I have to order some online. Um, but I wanted to show you guys the difference in what I'm doing here. Maybe it's overkill, even though it's going to be wrapped, but I think it looks a lot better than just wires like this. So I'm going to get the other one wrapped up real quick, and then we'll go out to the truck and get them installed. So a little update. We got the EGT probe all hooked up and uh, tucked back there. Looks nice and clean. And then the... Uh, Boost gauge sensor right here we got in there and it looks way cleaner than having the three wires exposed because you can see otherwise it looked like that factory wiring which looks terrible. That looks way better. So we got that all hooked up and then come under here under the uh, wheel well and you can see I got my uh, main supply coming out right here. This quarter inch goes to the uh, fuel pump, the fast, and then these, this uh, half inch loom right here goes to the two for the uh, boost gauge and the EGT probe. And then if you come back here into the cab, 
you can see my wires, which these are my main supply wires right here, and these are my power wires right here. Come down here, you can see uh, this is where I'll hook everything up. Well, not right there, but these are the wires that I'll use to hook up for the power, the ground, and the uh, dimmer switch. And then coming back to the fast, you can see I pulled out this little tiny plug out of the top of the fast there, and I got the sensor in there right there, all plugged in, and I tucked the uh, wiring up along the frame. You can't even really tell. I got a zip tie right there. It's also kind of dark, but looks really good. Everything's hidden compared to whoever installed this fast. Did a really bad job. And, uh... I'm about to come through and redo it all because it looks like junk. It should have been on the inside of the uh, frame like I did on the second gen, but uh, yeah, going to have to fix that. But a little update, I haven't been able to film much because it's like tight underneath the bed where the fast is and it's also dark, so it's hard to film that. And then also under the engine bay, it's just always hard to film underneath there because you end up standing in front of the camera or moving in front of the camera trying to get to what you're working on. But anyways, I'm going to get to wiring the inside of the cab now. I... Uh, I'm gonna use the cigarette lighter on the driver's side because that only has power when you turn the key on. That one has constant power. It is taking longer than initially planned on, but I wanna do it as clean as possible and uh, hide all my wiring and make everything look good, unlike whoever installed the fast because that looks terrible and I'm gonna have to redo that. But let's get to wiring the inside of the cab now. So it's got the pillar in, it looks really good. Nice factory match, nice and tight. Everything lines up like it should, nothing weird. And then I went ahead and used the uh, bolt that came out of the handle, which looks like this little guy right here. And uh, I took the grinder to it and got the washer off because the auto parts store is closed already. So I'm gonna do with what we got. I'll probably end up changing it to something else uh, later on down the road, but for now that looks good. And uh, the top one will be EGTs. We got boost here in the middle and the bottom will be our fuel pressure. So. I'm gonna go ahead and cut everything up, get our gauges installed, and then we'll go ahead and hook up the power for everything. So I just got all the gauges in and let's just say they are a super tight fit. I had to take the sticker off the actual gauge itself because it was coming off and I didn't want it to stick out around the uh, little bezel here and show. So I had to take those off, but other than that, it looks super good. Cannot wait to get these things up and running. But now next step is gonna be doing all the wiring for the power, um, which is the power of the ground and also the dimmer, which dimmer I'm gonna tap into right here. And then the uh, Power, I'll do the cigarette lighter and then a ground, I'll just find one in here. But let's get to that. So I just unhooked the batteries. Um, and before I did that, I went ahead and tested the cigarette um, harness right here. There's two wires for me. The blue wire will be the power on ignition. So I run my power to that. You have to run an inline fuse, which they provide. So I got that right here. The one amp fuse they also give you. I'm gonna put it up underneath the dash right there. So if I need to access it, it'll be super easy and fast and not to pull anything off. But that's what I'm doing now. So I just finished tapping the cigarette lighter and got the power for that, put the cover back on there. Everything's all clean and tucked. And then I tapped my dimmer wire, which is the orange with the blue stripe. So that's like I can push this back in place. And then I'll put those two covers back on and then I'll hook up the batteries and then we'll make sure everything works as it should. All right guys, so we are, a couple, couple days later, I'm on a drive, I got my uh, phone set up right here so I can give you guys like a closer perspective of the gauges when we hop on the uh, i5 here in a minute so I can show you boost. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think I'm making for boost. Like I said before, I was maxing out the stock boost gauge at 35 is what it goes up to. I was maxing that out. Um, so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think I'm making for boost. I'm gonna guess 40 to 45, somewhere in there. Um, but like I said, a couple days later, uh, I've been driving with the gauges, 
they all work great. Um, I already really like them. They look cool at nighttime when they all light up, which I'll show you guys later here at the end of the video. Oh. I'll wait until it gets dark out. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, all, everything's at where it's supposed to. Right now we got fuel pressure 18. Um, our EGTs are at 400 because we just started up. We just left Home Depot. Had to grab some, grab some supplies for another project we're working on. Um, but we're about to hop on the freeway here and uh, I'll show you guys what they look like when they're in full use. Got Remy in the back. We just stopped and got her some uh, ear protection for the uh, truck show. So I realized I never filmed an outro for this video because we got so busy working on the truck, filming a crap ton of videos to where like I was filming four in one day because I'd be working on one thing and then you get that done and you go on to another thing or getting the tires mounted up, stuff like that. I mean, you can see how many boxes we have back there and there's, there's more stuff still going on um, in present time, which it's current time. Today's uh, the 30th um, July, which you guys can't even see, but I forgot to film the outro, so that's what I'm doing now. It's been a very crazy experience getting the truck done, um, doing things last minute, which if you guys do last thing, if you guys build the truck last minute, make sure you have every single part because we ran into um, some issues with some things, which you guys will see. But it's been a very interesting, crazy last month. Um, I bought another vehicle. It's not a truck, but it's something for the family because unfortunately the Camry had some problems. I, I, was driving it to work one day um, to save money on fuel and because in Portland, every time I drive to work, which I put up on my Instagram story real quick the other day, the reason why I bought the Camry for $1,800 and I drive it to work sometimes is because I work in Portland almost every, well, every single day. And a lot of the spots I work at are really tight. Like I work on um, I hit the hill by OHSU, if you guys know where that's at, the hospital. And people don't know how to drive in Portland. When I moved out of Portland, my insurance went down $300 over a six month premium which is insane. But it's been backed into four times in the last month alone, which is crazy and hilarious and exactly why I bought the car. It's good on gas mileage and if it gets hit, I don't care, I like the truck. But it's almost worth it to see people's reaction when they hit me and also see how bad they are at parking. But unfortunately, when I was driving through the uh, car to work a couple weeks ago, there was a bunch of smoke coming out of the hood and I parked it, so I popped the hood and there was a bunch of oil. The valve cover gasket went bad and then uh, the spark plugs were bad too, so I replaced those and the freaking camshaft position sensor went out as well. So I got that replaced. And typical auto parts store, uh, I went to AutoZone and I gave them the VIN for the car and they sold me a um, valve cover gasket for a V8. And when I got home, I looked at it and I was like, this isn't right, so I had to go back. And then I returned it and went to Rally's and got the right one. Anyway, side note, it's been a crazy month. Just, you know, things keep getting thrown my way that I have to take care of and uh, we're getting them knocked out. Needed a uh, break from social media and YouTube for um, a little bit just because it's been crazy and I wanted to spend time with my family, which I really haven't had. And uh, things haven't been going as planned, but you work through them and you get past them and you keep your head up and keep moving forward. So that's what we're doing here. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, go down below with that subscribe button. I'm trying to stay over here because there's stuff over there you guys can't see yet for upcoming, for upcoming videos. But huge shout out to ISPRO. If you're looking to check out with those new gauges, I really like them. I think they look good, nice factory match. But overall, I'm really happy with them. Super easy install. I think they look really good. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of them. If you want to pick some up for yourself, check them out at ispro.com. Go give them a follow on Instagram at ispro.official. I'll put everything down below in the description. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Triple. I think the 30, the, um, May. And what I did when I took the, what are you doing? You interrupting me? But I'll catch back up with you guys later and I'll show you what they look like then. <laughs> 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 <laughs>